Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Welcome to Palm Sunday, which is the beginning of what? Holy. All right. Good answer. Very good. Well, we're glad you're here. Um, DYC today following uh, worship. And then uh, just a reminder, there's no Bible study on Wednesday. And, uh, but we do have services the remainder of the week. Monday, Thursday, 7 o'clock. And we'll be celebrating communion again. Um, on Monday, Thursday, and then uh, Good Friday, 7 o'clock, uh, again, here, and next Sunday, no Sunday school, uh, Resurrection Sunday, but a reminder that we will have the Floral Cross processional on uh, Resurrection Sunday, so bring the flower and put in the cross, and uh, and I just want to uh, uh, thank again all who provided for our choir, uh, Bible College Choir that came last week. Uh, they had a great time. Uh, they just enjoyed uh, meeting people and uh, enjoyed uh, the good food. And I would just like to thank the Board of Fellowship and the March Serving Committee. They had their hands full and they did an excellent job. Of so I guess we just need to have a couple of potlucks a month just to keep everybody in shape. Right? All right. So um, we have birthdays this week. Um, I'll just announce all of them. Uh, Monday is Justin Torreson. Wednesday is Justin And Saturday is Jess Barnum. Oh, I had a, I did, thank you. You were supposed to, you were supposed to play me down. Uh, we do have a, another announcement. Uh, for those who aren't aware, some are, of course. But Christian and Bethany Bickle oh. are expected.
My spiritual takeaway is that I'm really with love, even though it might just like it. How have you grown since camp, and what are you doing differently since returning? Something I've done differently is trying to put God in my everyday life, like reading my Bible or doing my devotion when I can. What moldy fruit were you finding confident in, but are now choosing to give up? Um, I was comfortable with being lazy and not really doing much with the rest of my day after I got back home. Worship. 
worship you and praise you to receive from you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
read in Jesus' name. When the sixth hour came, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama thabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But some of the bystanders heard it and began saying, Behold, he is calling Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink, saying, Let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud, loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was standing right in front of him saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also some women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Less and Joses and Salome. When he was in the Galilee, they used to follow him and minister to him. And there were many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'll invite our ushers to come forward at this time to wait upon us for our tithes.
This session of the court is now called to order. The court calls Mary of Magdala. Is that true? Yes. 
The soldiers kept most of the people at some distance. I, I guess they feared the disciples might start a riot or try to and or try to save Jesus in some other way, but they allowed some of the women to come closer. It was terrible to see us suffering. But we wanted to offer some comfort, any comfort we could. And as it turned out, though, we were comforted and inspired. Comforted and inspired? Watching a man beg for his life, curse his tormentors? We warned you that this witness's mental balance might be fragile. It might be she was not completely cured in the first place. Surely no one in their right mind could find the trials of a criminal at the point of execution inspiring. But that's just it. Jesus, who was innocent and had more right than anybody to curse, spoke words of comfort and blessing. Why, his first words were a prayer for forgiveness to those who were doing this to him. He said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. Well, it must have been known that some criminals facing execution speak highly to their executioners, even try to slip them bribes in hopes of being treated with some sort of mercy even if it's just a swifter death. But Jesus wasn't just praying for the soldiers. He was asking God to forgive all who made his suffering necessary. Even you. Even me. It is our sin as much as theirs that's required, that required Christ to make this sacrifice. That's why his next words were so important. The ones he spoke to the thief. You see, Jesus was crucified between two bandits. One taunted Jesus, but the other acknowledged his sin, recognizing, recognizing that Jesus was innocent and also recognized his divine origins. He asked Christ to intervene for him with God. He sought forgiveness and was promised eternal life. This is what the whole story of salvation is about. Christ came to die for our sins. Whether criminal acts or everyday sins, we're not aware of. It's God's gift to us so that we can live and die in peace, knowing we will always be with Christ and He will be with us. We need only to accept the gift. Yes, well, that's very nice. But let's get back to the facts and testimony of what you heard. By the way, are there any cooperating witnesses? Or were you just the only one who heard Jesus speak? Well, yes, there were others here. In fact, Jesus' next words were to his mother and his beloved disciple John. I believe. He, Jesus, loved and cared for his mother right to the end. Jesus gave her into the care of John, his disciple. They were to be family for each other. And thus, Christ set an example for all, all of us. We are to be each other's fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, sisters and brothers. We are to take Jesus' place in caring for, comforting, and supporting each other. This really isn't the appropriate time or place for a sermon on Christian fellowship. I aim to tell you. Could we please get back to what you saw and what you heard. Well, there wasn't much more. It became dark like night, even though it was midday. 
and that darkness lasts for three hours. Jesus suffered in silence for a while, and then he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He must have felt abandoned by God. But that separation is what Jesus saved us from. You can't feel more alone than being abandoned by God. But is that all? Almost. When Jesus knew the end was at hand, he said, I thirst. A soldier got a sponge on a stick and dipped it in some cheap common wine, almost like vinegar, and let him suck on some of it. Then Jesus said, it is finished, and commended himself into God's hands. I'm sure you were all glad to see that Jesus' suffering was now finally over. Of course, all your dreams and plans, well, they were over as well. Some might have seen it that way. But Jesus and those who believed in him knew that what was finished was not Jesus' suffering. Much more importantly, God's plan for salvation was completed. Jesus had fulfilled God's righteousness, lived a holy life, and none of us could, and, and taken the weight of our sins upon himself. He could then give himself over into God's care. And now, thanks to Jesus, we can too. Well, the point is, it was finished. He died, and that was the end of it. I think the jury has heard enough now. Thank you, you are dismissed. But that isn't the end. Yes, he died, but that wasn't the end. Let me just tell you the rest of the story. This is, this is what we fear. The stress has unhinged poor Mary. Ah, uh, Mary, your time is up for today. Perhaps we will recall you at another session of the court. For now, again, you are dismissed. You may go. Thank you for your testimony. Poor Mary. She's so sunk in her delusions. Next, I guess, she would be telling that Jesus, this very human carpenter turned rabbi, rose from the dead. And if we believe in him, we will rise also. It's amazing what people are willing to believe. This court is in recession. Please be seated as we worship together.
Lord Jesus Christ on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, when he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also when they had supped, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, when he had blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. All of you drink of it in remembrance of me. And the Apostle Paul reminds us, It is not this cup, this cup of blessing, blessing which we bless is sharing in the blood of Christ, it is not the bread which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. Since there is one bread, we who are many partake of the one bread, and therefore we are a part of the one body. As you know, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. We invite you to commune at his table. We'll be distributing the elements in the pew this morning. And we ask that as you receive the bread, you hold the bread until all have taken. And we can all partake of the bread together. And the same with the cup. Just a reminder that the very center section of each tray containing the wine, the very center section has grape juice for those who prefer that.
letter of revelation, his proclamation, as the New Testament ends, come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, as you strengthen us and fill us and carry on, day by day, hour by hour, week by week, Lord, we look around us and to some we marvel, but we know of your healing touch, the strength that you and only you can provide. We thank you for the healing that's taking place with Vicki and, and the strength that she's receiving. We pray for Bob, Bob as he uh, as recovers from surgery and Lord, that there too you would provide your touch upon him. Lord, for those who are hurting, those who are experiencing difficult times in their lives, whether it's financial, emotional, um, physical, Lord, we rejoice in Emily's clean bill of health. But Lord, we just trust you for what you are accomplishing, what you are wanting to accomplish in our lives. We thank you for the prayer that you have given us that we can together lift our voices and worship you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Please stand for the benediction. Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.